Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous has proven to be a pretty popular and well-received series for Netflix. And now with two seasons being a hit back to back, a third is no doubt on the way with even a few pieces of merchandise teasing what's to come in the next few months. But what are the filmmakers overall plans for Camp Cretaceous and the wider Jurassic franchise going to be going forward? Well, in this video, I wanted to go over a few recent Colin Trevorrow interviews where he discussed just that. Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Now in today's video, I wanted to kick things off with two recent articles, one from The Hollywood Reporter and the other from Screen Rant. Here Colin Trevorrow was asked a series of questions surrounding the new Netflix show, as well as Jurassic World Dominion. And a lot of it happens to overlap with both stories in a way that I found to be very interesting. So first things first, in The Hollywood Reporter, Colin stated that, quote, he wanted Dominion to feel like the end of one long story that started in 1993, and that he wanted to try and sew them, all the movies, together, and Camp Cretaceous was a part of that. He also said in the separate article by Screen Rant that, quote, we do have a story that I think you can see that we've been building, and a mystery, and all kinds of larger elements that will take these kids deeper into a journey that pulls further and further away from Jurassic World. But it's also always running parallel to the story that we're telling in the movies. That was part of the fun for me, to sit down with everybody and think about the long game. I told them everything that happened, so we were really able to work ways into the story that will feel like a culmination of this show as well. Every piece of the story we've told has value, and I think all of these kids will reveal themselves as the show goes on to really be part of the legacy of Jurassic Park. I think you can see it even more in this season than you could in the last, and I hope that'll continue. Now after Colin said that, a follow-up question was thrown at him which stated, The show is such a great voice cast, not just the young actors playing the kids, but also some cool adults popping up like Bradley Whitford and Stephanie Beatrice in Season 2. Are there plans for legacy characters to pop up in some way, shape, or form? Now Colin responded with the following, I can't tell you now. I mean, we all know what they're doing during this time. I will probably leave that for you to discover. The only thing I'll promise is we're not going to kill the kids in the volcano. I just don't want you thinking that's what my whole master plan is. That would be really upsetting. So I don't really think any of us believe that the kids would die in the volcano because that just doesn't seem like something anybody would do, but it'd also be kind of ironic if the kids had a chance to get off the island. <laughs> <laughs> with all those people on it in Fallen Kingdom, and then still got burned up. But anyways, following off of what he said here, the idea of legacy characters possibly popping up in Camp Cretaceous is extremely interesting to me, and I think that I speak for a lot of people when we all saw that scene where Mitch and Tiff turned around and it kind of looked like they could sort of be Alan Grant and Ellie Sattler, how really, really cool that felt. Now, I don't think Grant or Sattler will be stepping foot on Nublar during the time that the kids are on the island, but I do think that having other people pop up at some different point in time would be really, really cool. Now, the only issue I'm personally running into is I don't know who those people could be. I mean, would Dr. Wu go back there? Well, he didn't go back in Fallen Kingdom, so I don't know. Would someone like Ken Wheatley show up? I could see that happening, but I'm thinking more along the lines of legacy, legacy characters in terms of like Lex Murphy, Tim, Ian Malcolm, are any of these people gonna be there? It's really hard for me to say, but another thing that he brought up earlier here was the fact that they've been building a quote, mystery and all kinds of larger elements that will take these kids deeper into a journey that pulls them further and further away from Jurassic World, but ends up being part of the legacy of Jurassic Park. Now, call me crazy, but that certain scene in season one where Eddie started flipping out when the kids found him inside of the abandoned lab, talking about how nobody knew what they were really doing there and that him and the other guys were sort of in on some sort of conspiracy in Jurassic World to create monsters. I have a feeling that this Dr. Wu subplot that's been building ever since 2015 is probably going to get the rug pulled out from underneath it once we see Dominion. Something is telling me that they're really pushing forward with the idea that there's some sort of long through line where Dr. Wu, who is the only character from the original Jurassic Park that did wind up in the actual film for Jurassic World, and of course he's in Fallen Kingdom, he's in Camp Cretaceous as well, I have a feeling that 
Dr. Wu and his ties to Jurassic Park and possibly some other company, whether it be Manticore, Biosyn, I don't know, but I have a feeling that there is a big mystery here involving E750, the Indominus Rex, and everything else going on that's been super shady with J uh, JP that's probably going to come to a head and I don't know if it'll be season three, but definitely Dominion if I had to put my money on it. Now, the reason I think this is so cool is because, like I mentioned before in my video on why Jurassic World Dominion will tie into the Jurassic Park trilogy in a lot of big ways, I just feel like if you have one continuous story, which is what Colin wants to do, he wants to sew everything together, if you have one through line from JP1 to JP6, you're just going to make the whole series that much more enjoyable. And seeing Camp Cretaceous be such a big part of this whole universe is actually very exciting to me. Now, I know that they have teased before in the past that the kids could actually go over into live action if the show proves popular enough, and I like the sound of that. I know some people have even been speculating, which I, I don't think this is true, but some people have been saying that Mamadou Athi's character could be Darius from Camp Cretaceous. I don't think the timeline lines up with that because Darius is like 12 in 2015 and Mamadou Athi is not. <laughs> so I don't know. I do think that a lot of people love this show and the characters in it though. So seeing them actually get some sort of representation and possibly even the live action TV series that they talked about back in 2019 or 2020, that would be really cool. But as of right now, the idea of everything just being mixed together into one long continuous storyline is pretty cool to me. So the writer goes on to say, the thing I liked the most about season two of Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous was the watering hole. I thought it really recaptured the Spielbergian magic of the original Jurassic Park. How hands-on are both you and Steven Spielberg in producing Camp Cretaceous. And Collins said the following, I'll let Steven answer that one for himself. He'll actually just show up at DreamWorks Animation and talk to the writers on his own accord. And I know how much they love it. That much I know, but for most of those occasions, I wasn't there. They got to have their own experience with him, which is pretty cool. That's actually something that surprised me a bit because I always figured that I know Colin answers to Spielberg, but I always figured that they were kind of like, you know, a two guy deal as far as producers go in and that Spielberg was always with Colin and Colin was always with Spielberg. But it looks like, no, they're seeing each other separately. I guess Spielberg has dates set up where he gives his own interpretation of what he thinks should happen, the story beats that are going to play out and just what is important for Jurassic Park. And then Colin has his own meetings with people, which it's actually really cool. I like that they're doing that. Colin goes on to say that he got to be a part of the writer's room. He got to sit in there for a pretty significant amount of time and be able to lay out a set of values that they all shared about the franchise and what was important to all of them about it and what elements they felt were a third rail and didn't want to go there. That kind of basic stuff. Quote, it was just a completely different set of people, and all of them have their own perspective on Jurassic Park, why they love it, and what's important to them about it. I was able to listen to them and build something from the ground up with people who were for the most part younger than me, who had a very different experience with Jurassic World than anyone my age ever could be. We're Jurassic Park people, anyone in their 40s. Maybe it's a bit of a tangent, but I too have to put myself into the mindset of a kid who was seven or eight and saw Jurassic World first. That was their jam, and as we go through this and make a show that might be the first time certain kids are ever exposed to anything Jurassic, we've gotta make sure that it has all of the things the movies have. That it's emotional and it has real characters with fears that resonate with us and it's thrilling and funny, and it's scary. Even though it's a kid's show, it's still gotta be scary. And I think all of those things really shine through in both seasons of Camp Cretaceous. Now, when they eventually do tie everything together in either season three with the reveal of what E750 is, or with Dominion, where I actually, on a side note, I think it'd be really cool to see cameos of the kids in that movie. But when they tie everything together, I think it'll feel fine because Camp Cretaceous is really setting itself apart as just Jurassic Park as an animal animated series. And it works. It's, it's surprising how well it works. It's got an extremely good reception, which I never thought was possible, but it's turning out to be really, really cool. So all things considered, I think the idea of Camp Cretaceous getting a season three and maybe even beyond that is very, very good news. And I think it's very, very cool to see how in-depth and personal Colin Trevorrow can be on these Jurassic properties and Steven Spielberg as well. That was actually something that I also thought was really, really cool. Now, where they take this in the future, I have 
have no idea, but they did tease that crossover in live action if everything ended up being as up and up and good as they had hoped for it to be. So who knows? They know what they're going to do in season three. Legacy characters coming back. I don't know who that could possibly be or if that will even happen, but I definitely welcome it if it's done properly anyways. Whatever is going to happen next and how it will tie into Dominion, I have no idea. But I just want to say that the whole mysterious stuff that Eddie was talking about in Season 1 and the follow-up with E750 and the kids finding that little key card in Season 2, I feel like there's a bigger story at play here that involves Wu, and who knows what he's up to. We still haven't seen Manticore. They were teased heavily in the first season, and they never showed up, so that's just, uh, that's crazy in my opinion. Anyways, guys, what do all of you think about this stuff? What do you think Colin Trevorrow was talking about when he said that they're laying down the groundwork for a mystery and overall sewing together all of these stories in one final conclusion? And what do you think the mystery is? What do you think E750 is? is, what was going on with Dr. Wu, what do you think about Camp Cretaceous in general? Personally, I hope we get a trailer for Season 3 as soon as possible, but hey, whatever your own thoughts and opinions happen to be, I'd love to hear them in the comments down below. Now before I go, I'd like to thank all of my game wardens, as well as all of my engine executives. I'd also like to thank all of my park workers and engine hunters as well. Guys, it seriously means the world to me that you all continue to support what I do, and I never want you to ever forget that. Now, I'd like to thank you all for watching today's video, and hope you all enjoyed the content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like and hope that you'll consider subscribing if you're interested in hearing from me again. I'll see you all in the next video, guys, and as always, take it easy.